Hi, Mike Kennedy. Uh, playing around. Just struck me that, uh, you know, tea candles. These are from the Dollar Tree, so you get 20 of them. Now, I don't know how long these would burn. And uh, maybe we could find out. But my thought was here, uh, obviously, it's not going to be as good as the uh, hex uh, hexamine type starter blocks that come with the Espit stove. This is the mini one. This is a smaller one. But my thought was, could we use tea candles with this? It's small, so we're going to be down lower. Now it's got a very limited amount of space there. But uh, let's see how many. For now, we're just going to see how many of these we can fit in there. We can fit in two and three. Don't know. Uh, and my thought here is uh, the chemical uh, blocks that are much preferable to use are, in fact, quite smelly. And I was thinking, for what about for some emergency indoor use? Uh, you know, the power's out. I don't know. Maybe you could use it outside in uh, low wind situations. But again, it's going to take quite a while. So, right there, I think I have my answer. You could fit three in here at once. Look, it closes up on them. Interesting. So, uh, we're going to give this a try. Maybe try heating up a cup of water. I don't know if we'd ever get to the boil with this. Uh, you know, traditionally things like this are used for a little bit of light or to keep something warm. But of course, that's all going to depend on how close you are to a flame and how much heat radiates away from the thing you're heating up. Now obviously with, uh, oh, they did it like that. Don't store them together. <laughs> they jam up in there. But some of that's going to have a lot to do with uh, directing that heat up. Of course you can have heat escaping here. Uh, I watched a video where they, <coughs> another person had another company had made a so very similar to this and a big improvement was they had a sheet of metal on one side. In other words, works as a windscreen. So uh, I bet we could do that with aluminum foil. You know, we do have holes on the bottom, but of course when we've got these, these tea candles are, are blocking some of those air holes. So anyway, I think we'll try this little experiment. Uh, I'll probably set it up at home in the par pa palace just for ease of trying it out. And, uh, you know, I assumed that we'd have to cut in half or double times at least when you're out in an environment where it's cold and it, there's a lot of this wind or whatever. But let's try. Okay, here we are. And why would we be doing this anyway? I, I don't know. Maybe we ran out of regular fuel, but this fuel really smells. And you know I've got parrots, so we, you can't do things that smell. Plus, I want to keep these for an actual emergency because they're going to generate enough heat to actually get something done, like boil some water. But I uh, thought we'd just give this a try. Uh, so... You can open up all the way or part way. I found all the way open uh, didn't support my uh, my uh, nesting cup that I have that fits my water bottle. So I find you can you can put three in, but it's hard to light three. First, uh, the the wick is down, so we're gonna put the wicks up. Uh, Using, I'm using a lighter, and uh, tipping a lighter down to light these, you'll see 
excuse me, in my last attempt on the last candle. Uh, it gets, gets quite hot down there, so I switched to something else. But so you're 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 turning the the uh, thing to what quite an angle, and that means a lot of the heat is just coming right up back to your hands, your fingers that are doing it. So. Uh, Now matches would work better because matches have more of a reach than a lighter does as far as where your fingers are. Okay, this is the one I have trouble with now because we've got we've got quite a bit of heat. And I've got to still try to get my my fingers in there. It's like, uh oh, no way. So what are we gonna do? Let's make a match. I'm just gonna stare, tear a little piece of paper off. This paper actually has some uh plastic backing so it's gonna it's gonna burn really well so uh now we've got them all lit and we gotta blow this thing out so there we go they're lit and uh we've got our dave canterbury nesting cup but you can see the my water bottle on the extreme right but uh I'm just putting it on something so it doesn't heat up the counter too much. I can't imagine that would be a problem, but who knows. So you can see, uh oh, that would put the candles out. So we have this second position here, and that holds it. You can see my water to begin with is about 65 degrees. And uh, so now it's basically a big waiting game to see what we're gonna see. Boy, that could make you seasick. That's gonna stop eventually. Now again, uh, uh, the fumes from these tabs are primarily what I'm trying to uh, see. That almost looks like it's got a little motor in it, doesn't it? I've got this older, you know, broken up iPhone that I'm gonna use for a timing device. And what we're going to do is check the <laughs> check the uh, temperature and time as we go along. There, thank goodness. Okay. You can see there we're starting it now. Oops, we hit the button. Sorry, we're starting it. There we go. So like I say, realistically, we, we should at least want to get up to like 160 degrees fairly quickly uh, because if we're going to pasteurize some water to drink, uh, we don't want to wait hours to do it. And I'm only using a cup of water, eight ounces, which is near 250 milliliters. So uh, that's not a whole lot of water. Normally, you would want to have this cup full if you're going to try to... Uh, treat some water because a cup of water that's not much water and I suppose if you're just making tea or something like that maybe this is going to be all right but I was hoping with three tea candles we could get it a good uh, amount of heat coming up uh, you can see now we've gone to a few degrees above 70 so we're definitely getting there. It's funny, I brought another thermometer. This is actually a darkroom thermometer. And I brought another, got another thermometer out because I, I knew that it was going to go up higher. <laughs> Little did I really know. So we're maybe 76 now. So you can see right at the beginning, this is, it's, it's uh, going up pretty fast. So. I've seen a lot of people cook little meals with these things. Usually they're 
they're just boiling a quantity of water. Uh, you have some of these uh, 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 freeze-dried meals. You can take a, you know, get a cup of water or so to boil, or two cups, whatever, and uh, you pour it in the bag, and uh, then you wait so many minutes. Uh, there's a lot of food that you can just add boiling water to, wait a certain length of time, and then eat it. Uh, up to 80 degrees. One of the things you can do to extend the cooking time is, say you were to have a, you get, say we've got the, the cup almost full and we've got uh, water in it. Uh, we mix something to it. There's this concept called a cozy, which is kind of an insulated container you put it in. Uh, in the old days, say you straw in a box with the idea that you'd cook, get something up to a boiling temperature, then you would stick it in that insulated box and it would continue to cook. And the fact the box was insulated meant that not so much of the heat would radiate away. And when you don't have a lot of fuel or electricity is extremely expensive, this idea of using something to continue to cook the food uh, when there's no fuel applied uh, can become very important. You'll often see people with kind of a quilted type material that they'll stick their cup or pot in. Like that's more, more of what you call a cozy and that traps the heat in. So say you were doing pasta, you would bring the water up to a boil, put the pasta in, then put it in that cozy maybe for 15, well, at least for 10 minutes. Uh, see, we're up to four minutes and we got up to 85 degrees. So we're going at a good clip right now. You know, the idea of uh, letting things cook after you turn off the heat, there's a channel called Depression Cooking and it features this 94 old year, year woman. Unfortunately, she since passed away, but her name was Clara and she talks about the Depression era and what she cooked, what they had. They had a victory garden, which made a big difference for their family. But they would do things like put the pasta in the boiling water, then turn the stove off. Because that, I don't know whether it was gas or electric or whatever, but that fuel was expensive. So by just letting that uh, spaghetti set in that water for 10 or 15 minutes, it would have this, it would come out cooked just as well as if you had been boiling it for, save for, six or seven minutes. So uh, here we are, we're up to uh, we're up to nine and a half minutes. So you can see we're increasing in temperature still. We're over a hundred degrees, 105 degrees. This is Fahrenheit of course. 18 minutes, we've gotten up here higher, even tw now 22 minutes. And here we are 27 minutes. This is the area where it seems to be taking a lot longer to go any bit further. See at 36 minutes, we've basically gotten to the point where this is gonna have to go a whole another hour at least to get up anywhere appreciably. So that's the end of this experiment. Uh, I'm just gonna show you this close up so you can see, you'll see that you can see right down to the bottom of these little candles because the paraffin wax has become transparent. And then when they're out, they'll re-solidify like you see in the uh, credits, the title of the video. So the follow-up, uh, you can see I, you know, 30 plus minutes and we still hadn't gotten to uh, a decent temperature. What I'm calling a deep, decent temperature is 160 degrees. If we want to pasteurize water, in other words, kill all the bad organisms in it, we can get bring water up to 160 degrees and hold it for five minutes. That will kill everything in it that could be dangerous to us. 
and so it just didn't do it. Now, I must admit, looking back now, maybe with the cover, it would have helped more, but you could see at one point it was generating some amount of vapor was coming out of it. And it seemed to me that the, the, the way the temperature was going up was leveling off more and more. So there's a point at which this, the, the steam rising from it is gonna take away a lot of the heat that it be is, is being generated by the candles. So as we go along, going up further degrees is gonna take a much, much longer period of time. And I would assume here I am doing it in the house, no wind. It's just totally unrealistic to think that this system could do much for you in a windy environment. Now, if we were to have, it would be very easy for, with, if we get some of the stiffer aluminum foil to make a uh, windscreen and even uh, a cover for the top. Although I do have a cover for that somewhere. But make a cover for the top and then uh, try it again. But, and I noticed too, <coughs> you saw in the little last of the video that the paraffin becomes, paraffin base, whatever it is, becomes completely clear. And uh, the danger there is that when it's clear, it's really liquid. The whole little cup is liquid, the tea candle. So if you move that, that would be very easy to spill it. And uh, spilling something with flames around isn't a good idea at all. So there's a problem there. Uh, you could see when I cooled it off again, the video, the little picture at the, uh, the end of the video, I believe it's beginning and end or something anyway, but it turns white again and then it's solid. So it's safer to move around. Now the interesting thing too was that, okay, so this was about 45 minutes or something. I would say by looking at the tea candle after it re-solidified that I only used 10% of the paraffin. So conceivably, could that run 10 hours a tea candle? Perhaps. So, uh, you know, it would take a long <laughs> to get anywhere. And like I say, you'd have to be, uh, it hasn't got the, the, the amount of heat that's generated all at once, like in the fuel tablets. <coughs> they tend to burn about nine minutes, I believe, but they generally can get, you know, a cup or so of water uh, to boil easily. Usually people do 500 mils or a liter when they're doing these boil tests, but I stuck with only a cup, which is only eight ounces, and uh, I just didn't get where I wanted to be. So uh, it could be viable for uh, a warm drink, I suppose. Uh, if you were to do, wanted to have, you know, hot cocoa or something, put hot cocoa and the milk in there and light the tea candles, wait an hour and come back and it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be in that 150, 140 degree range, which is where, like I say, it seemed to be, that's the point where it starts to really slow down. And, uh, the amount of heat carried out of the system uh, is equaling closer to what's being put into the to the water in the cup by those three tea candles. So, uh, tell me what you think. Bye.